It's high time we admit one clear fact. The world is drowning more and more in plastic. Over the past 70 years, the volume of plastic production has grown 180 times. At the same time, according to research by German environmentalists, only 50% of plastic waste ends up in landfills. So, where does the rest go? It is not difficult to guess that millions of tons of plastic remain unrecycled, while a huge part goes into the world's oceans along with the waters of rivers. Not a single scientist has been able to accurately assess the extent of the disaster. But indirect signs indicate that we are inexorably heading towards environmental disaster. One such piece of evidence is the giant, of the size of two countries like Germany, garbage patch in the North Pacific Ocean. Here, plastic accumulates which is carried by two currents from North America and Asia. By the way, it is the Asian countries led by China that account for the most plastic waste in the oceans. In addition, scientists offer discouraging prospects. If we do not start taking action today, then in two decades, 50 kilograms of plastic waste will lie on every meter of the coastline. The solution to the problem is seen in a significant limitation of the production of plastic and its efficient processing for secondary use. It's not just about remanufacturing plastic containers and household utensils. There are many more examples of successful plastic recycling. For instance, Nike, Adidas, and H&M have been making clothing and footwear from recycled plastic waste over the past few years. In the United States, bridges are being built from plastic waste. Their structure is 80% polymer bottles, and the remaining 20% are car bumpers and dashboards. In Holland, recycled plastic is used to build roads that do not heat up or melt in the sun. In Singapore, recycled plastic is smelted into panels to build prefabricated homes for refugees, fire victims, and victims of natural disasters. And in Kenya, recycled plastic is used to produce building bricks that are five to seven times more durable than concrete. The history of the last project is unique. The idea is to make plastic bricks originated from Nzambi Mati, a 29-year-old entrepreneur from Nairobi who has succeeded as an engineer with a Kenyan oil company before founding her startup. A specialist in material science, Mati has developed her own formula for the production of bricks, in which the main materials are plastic waste and sand. Through experimentation, Mati figured out which types of plastics bond best to each other, and then created the equipment that allowed her to mass-produce bricks. Today, a startup founder does not have to look for raw materials for her products. Plastic waste comes from packaging factories free of charge. Some of the raw materials are supplied by processors. For the production of bricks, Mati's company uses only a certain type of plastic, high-density polyethylene, for which bottles for milk and shampoo are made, low-density polyethylene in which breakfast cereals are packed, and polypropylene used for ropes and buckets. Ordinary plastic soda bottles are, however, not suitable because the material is too soft. Her company produces 1,500 bricks daily. And Zombie Mati does not hide the production technology. First, the plastic is mixed with sand. Then the resulting mass is heated and poured into special molds. The company's products are in great demand in Kenya, and the relatively low price results in a high demand. One square meter of heavy-duty tiles only costs about $7.50. Since its founding in 2017, Mati has recycled roughly 20 tons of plastic waste. Is it a lot or a little? For comparison, the Rhine, the most microplastic polluted river in Europe, carries 10 tons of plastic into the North Sea every year. This means that the contribution is still huge. The company's plans for the future are also encouraging. Mati plans to add another larger production line which will triple the plant's capacity. The example of a Kenyan startup is unique, but such a local success is hardly able to radically correct the situation with the plastic apocalypse. Obviously, solving the problem requires a systematic approach from the governments of different countries and heads of large corporations that produce this very plastic. If nothing is done, then in the near future, the problem will become unmanageable, 
And according to scientists, up to half of the world's population will get bogged down in plastic waste.